Yay, I got new paints. Yay, I'm so happy, they make me so happy. Um, and so with my new paints, I'm starting by painting the deltoid. And what you're seeing here is the origins. I started off by painting the clavicle in the front and the spine of the scapula in the back, and now I'm painting the humerus because all the fibers of the deltoids insert right onto the humerus. Fun fact about the deltoids, their origin is exactly the same as the insertion for the traps, which means the lateral one third of the clavicle, which is painted in the front, obviously, the entire spine of the scapula, which I will highlight in just a second, and then the acromion process, which is a little bony landmark on the lateral most point of the spine of the scapula, and it articulates with the clavicle. As a body worker, understanding the intimate relationship between two muscles that share an attachment site, like the deltoids and the traps in this example, is really important to what I do. So if somebody's got shoulder issues or neck issues, and I'm really thinking about the connective tissue that winds around the fibers of the muscle and then bleeds right into the bone and connects it to the bone and then bleeds right into the other muscle that is traveling out from there, I want to address the entire issue and understand that there is no disconnect. The word deltoid actually comes from Latin and Greek roots, kind of like all other anatomy terminology. And this word means triangle. So you'll see this in like the Greek word delta, which looks like a triangle. And then we also have the deltoid ligament in our ankle that looks like a triangle as well. And this muscle is no exception. It kind of looks like an upside down triangle. And the way that I'm painting it, might have been a little far-fetched. The deltoid that I painted on here is a little bit broader than I maybe could have painted or should have painted, but I'm still learning and I'm still figuring out how to get these things to look really representative. So this is my deltoid. Well, it's not my deltoid, it's my client's deltoid, but it's a deltoid. Back to the subject at hand, the deltoid muscle is considered a multipennate muscle, which just means that it's got multiple fibers that all converge together at one point. And with this muscle, that point is the deltoid tuberosity, which is the bony landmark about halfway down the humerus on the lateral part of the bone. As I'm starting to shade in all of these pennates, pennates, sections, parts of the deltoid, um, I want to talk about the fact that the deltoid is very typically described as having three parts. The anterior fibers, which come down from the clavicle, and the posterior fibers, which come down from the spine of the scapula, and then the middle fibers which come down from the acromion process and that lateral clavicle area and that acromioclavicular joint. As you look at all these little parts though you can totally see how it's been more recently discovered that the deltoid actually has seven parts and not three and that each of these little parts can be controlled separately from your nervous system. Which I think is pretty amazing. I mean if you think about it our muscles really do have these abilities to do all this incredible stuff. And when we're learning muscle anatomy and we're learning origin, insertion, and action, it kind of simplifies what the body does and really it's way more complex than we can fully describe. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to go back to the three sections and talk about what they do because it's a little simpler to understand but also understand that they do work together and they do have subtle fine lines between what one section does and then on to the next section and then all of the variants in between. Before I break down the actions though I want to emphasize a point that I feel like is really really important to understand whether you're just learning about muscle anatomy, whether you're learning about how to work on them, whether you're learning about how to stretch a muscle or engage a muscle and make it stronger. The white that I'm painting is the tendinous attachment site, which is really just where the periosteum and the epimesium or the paramecium really converge. And so they're all the same thing. It's all the same tissue. And here's the deltoid. You can really see on the back how it comes around that spine of the scapula all the way to the acromion process, connects onto the acromioclavicular joint, and I did not do a good job filming this, but oh well, all the way around the front to the lateral third of the clavicle. And here are its actions. So the anterior fibers will flex it forward and the posterior fibers will extend the arm backward. And then all three fibers together will abduct the arm. So pull the arm away from the trunk. Also, don't forget the anterior fibers medially rotate the arm and the posterior fibers laterally rotate the arm. Oh my gosh, that's so hard to say.
If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and check me out on social media and don't forget to be awesome.